Welcome back to another episode here on MicroPro Fishing. Today I'm out here at Silver Lake. You know, that lake that I've fished at like six times and never caught anything. But it's the perfect place to do a on the water review for the Piscifun Spark, which is right there. And the Piscifun Spark Pro, which is right there. This was a viewer request from Roman Deanda. He requested that I do a on the water review of the Spark by Piscifun or PC Fun. Um, I've heard it both ways, but uh, I'm pretty sure they're called Piscitarians when they only eat fish or something like that. Anyway, point is I have both. I have the Pro and the original, and I actually have the original Spark in 6.6 .6 to one and 8.1 to one. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a breakdown of all those things. Um, three out of four of them are on rods I use for casting and cranking. And the fourth one is on a jigging rod. So um, I'll go over all that stuff. But uh, for right now, thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out videos like this and we'll crank some of these here and see just exactly if we can get anything. But otherwise, we're just gonna do a little on the water review for the Piscifun Spark and Spark Pro. All right, so starting off, we are going to be throwing this Piscifun Spark Standard. I don't know if you want to call it that, but this is the 8.1 to one ratio. Obviously original red. I have this on a 7.3 medium heavy six gill Akylos, and this is a moderate action rod. I actually mostly have been planning to use this for basically mostly jigs or, or Texas rig stuff. Anything that's going to uh, bounce off the bottom and then when that fish picks it up the action will still have enough backbone on this one just for now i'm throwing a bladed jig this is a guggen squad clickbait these are awesome they have a really cool action i'm just gonna be tossing this around for the video uh, but the whole point is and it's actually on braid so it's a braid to a fluoro leader and the reason i chose the 8.1 for my kind of jig rod is because you know you make a big jig you want to be able to just kind of reel up on it really pretty quick without having to reel like four times to get enough um, line in. Also this guy with the braid on there, if I cut off the leader, I can use it for top water stuff like a popper or I can use it for a frog. Being medium heavy and moderate, it, it'll be okay for a frog. So I'm not sure if you will have been able to see that, but um, with this reel being this fast, especially using it for cranking and stuff like that, it's hard to keep stuff down in the water column. In that case, I was reeling it in and apparently too fast. These clickbaits tend to stay high in the water column, which is a good thing normally, but that's if you're using like a 6.5 or a 7 uh, reel. You're running this 8.1, this thing is moving really fast, climbing up in the water column, and uh, you will pull it up to the top if you're not looking for it. So something to note too fast honestly in an 8.1 for moving baits like this however it casts it just fine i mean i i didn't cast super hard but you'll i mean you can see and it is worth noting you do have to thumb the spool this is not a, a dc or something with a crazy smart braking system um, we have some some six gill reels. They are pretty incredible, and even without the electronic braking, they're basically where you can throw them without thumbing them. Shout out to six gill for their Hamar. That thing is crazy. Um, so, yeah, just uh, it's it's definitely a reel that you have to thumb the the spool on. That one didn't have any problems. I turned up the brakes just a little. I was a little under half and uh, with this jig that could have been a little bit too little uh, break on. One thing I, I have noticed is I tend to cast a little nicer than most people. Uh, Larry especially tends to whip really hard when he is casting and 
that will make you run into problems as well. So I know that that's pretty much a, a pretty well known thing with bait casters, but these uh, these actually do pretty well. Larry was surprised at how much he liked this thing after he finally gave it a good shot. So, all right, well, we've given a few casts with that guy. Let's grab a 6.6. .6. Not that that's gonna be any different as far as casting goes, but I will uh, talk about the 6.6. All right, so next up, we have a 6.6 to 1 Spark Standard. Just the red. This one is on a 7 foot 4, I think. What do we got? 7 4, fast action, favorite fishing white bird. This favorite white bird says it's a fast action. I would say it's more like a moderate action not even a moderate fast but a moderate it's definitely for me it's more of a cranking rod it's a medium heavy but it either feels like a medium fast action or it feels like a medium heavy moderate action because it has this this wobble to it which is is actually great i like the rod for what it is because i use it for cranking and throwing uh moving top water stuff things like that so it's great but it's not really as advertised. I would call this kind of an oddball. So that being said, favorite fishing white bird. These are actually about 60 bucks. So this rod is actually pretty affordable. It's IM24T carbon. So it's it's a good higher end rod. It's got a rubberized fork there and a foam knob that's favorite on the bottom. I know this is not a rod review, but this combo is actually really nice. It feels really light feels very responsive. I'm gonna be just tossing around a Guggen Squad revolver today. Sorry about the tag end. A really quick thing on the revolver. The one complaint I have with these, which I have almost none, but this is the one I do, is these are not extremely well oiled. To start with, you can probably hear it. It's a little squeaky. I'm sure a little bit of three in one oil would fix a lot of that. I haven't done that yet, but probably should or WD-40. But yeah, just something to think about. These things are actually really nice once they get going, get a little bit of water in, in that little tube and start spinning. I'm just gonna toss this around a couple times. It's not gonna matter. The 6.6 .6 is gonna be just like the other one, but um, it's a really smooth casting reel. Probably gonna turn you guys around, have you guys uh, shoot over my shoulder here just on this next cast so you guys can get a look at this revolver. I think the problem I had is the last time I was fishing this thing, I was standing way up above it, and so it was kind of acting weird, but now it seems to be running really, really pretty well. So let me switch you guys around here and we'll get another cast in. But as you guys can see, I don't cast super crazy. I'm just casting it around, but you know, that's not terrible for, for the bank. I would say that this is definitely probably geared toward people that can get a little bit closer to what they're trying to fish. This isn't an absolute bomber of a reel. Um, this thing's not going to cast a country mile and not backlash, at least not with something too light, I guess. So that's it, that's the spark. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the two that I got. I have one more rod I brought out. It has a spark 6.6 one on it. That is my six skill Kratos, which is a great rod. It's a medium action. It is shorter handle on it. Great for if you're in a boat or a kayak or something, you want that shorter handle. It is made for more like small crankbaits, you know, lighter square bills, lighter uh, lipless crankbaits, things like that that are, um, are gonna be using a, a lighter line and stuff like that. You're just gonna be, you know, that, the bigger rod won't do it quite as well, casting too much, too heavy a line, that kind of stuff. So uh, I have that, I don't have it rigged up. I'm not probably gonna cast around with it since we did already do this one, which pretty much showed everything just fine. So that's gonna be it for the regular Spark. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the Spark Pro, which is arguably the best part of this. So, I will have already put this up on the screen, but the Spark is regular price $39.99. You can easily find that reel for $30, $32, something like that consistently. Right now, it is 25% off, so that's 
30 bucks right there from their website. Amazon quite often has deals for these, like, uh, you know, random 20% off, random 15% off, stuff like that. Yeah, great deal, great reel. I have three of them and I enjoy them. Larry is impressed with them, even though he's kind of a real connoisseur, so that's a good thing. However, they have a metal handle. They have a pretty small handle and their grips are rubber and flat. I don't mind that per se, but some people do. And they're red, they only come in red, so you can't get them in a different color. So I know Cast King does different colors for different speeds. They just do one color, the spark is red. It always has been so far. So if that matters to you, there's other options. Ryan has the Piscifun Torrent. Um, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit larger reel. That's another thing to, to note real quick is, these are 80 size reels, so they're a little smaller. And if you think of like a Shimano SLX or a Corrado, something like that, those are 100 size reels, I believe is what they're called. And they're a little bigger in your hand, but they're still comfortable. They're not uncomfortable to carry, but I believe they're 100 size reels, which means that they're a little bit bigger, a little more aligned, you can spool on there. These have a pretty small spool, but they still carry enough that most times you're not gonna have a problem. I mean, 145 yards of 10 pound braid, which you would never use 10 pound braid really, but mm. seven pound mono, 109 yards. Well, I have, I believe this is eight pound mono on here and I have never been able to cast anywhere near the bottom of the spool. So maybe I'm spooling them too much, but I don't get a bunch of backlash. Anyway, here's the next one I got. So I got this incredible rod from Six Gill, which is called the Kranken. The Kranken is a technique specific rod. It's made for crankbaits and for any type of diving crankbait or whatever, crankbaits. That's all it's made for. Cranking, cranking, cranking. So I bought this rod. Nothing I had would look really great on this rod. I had really wanted to buy this Spark Pro for quite a while. I kept looking at it, but I didn't have anything that it would look good on. I know looks aren't everything, but sometimes, you know, you want your combos to look good. So here we are. 6.6 .6 to one, just like the last one. Carbon handle. I don't know if you can see that. Carbon handle, foam grips on it a little bit larger oversized foam grips still an 80 size still the same smaller size that fits in your hand really nice i mean i could put my whole hand over this thing same logo on the top it says spark pro right here on this on this side same adjustments same drag i think this is 16 and a half pounds sorry i have some loud mouth canadians in the background no worries they're headed out so same stuff, I believe it's 16 and a half pound drag. Just an overall really nice reel. I mean, it's the same as the other one, so there's nothing different. It's the same thing there, but as far as the internals, this thing has more bearings. It has carbon fiber handle, those nicer foam grips. Just overall, it's a little bit smoother reel. It's a little lighter because it has that carbon fiber handle instead of the metal handle. Overall, it just feels really nice. And paired with this Kranken, I don't know if I've ever had a rod and reel combo that I actually like the feel of more, but big part of that is this rod. Nothing against the reel. I like the reel. I'm really happy with it, and I like how it looks on here and everything, but I think a large part of it is the rod because it is quite a nice rod. Similar. The only difference here is I'm going to be running all mono instead of braid. So we will see how this goes. that cast I was just making. As you can tell, I can whip this thing pretty hard. It still works pretty good. I have the brakes on about half, maybe a little on, a little over half. So it's about, you know, maybe 60, 55, 60%. It's definitely a very nice reel. I am surprised by how well it casts mono. Most reels just have problems casting mono and and sometimes fluoro, they just tend to, they like to spool faster than the line can go out. So you end up running into these freaking bird's nests all the time or rat's nests, whatever you want to call them. And that just doesn't 
doesn't work very well. It just ends up causing problems the whole time you're trying to fit. So for me, the fact that it casts mono so well is a is a big benefit. I do like that. So yeah, good reel. These ones are $79.99. Again, you can get discount. You can get them all the way down to, you know, get 25% off or whatever. I bought mine with gift cards and stuff too. So I think I got mine for like $55 or something like that. And that really definitely makes a big difference when you're talking about an $80 reel versus a $40 reel. So that's definitely worth it, you know. Well, ladies and gents, I just spent a couple of minutes talking to a local person, just kind of talking about what we're doing here. It's always funny when people walk up and wonder why I'm talking to a camera, but <laughs> if you ever see me, feel free to stop by and say hi. Come say hi, I'm, I'm definitely down. Anyway, to sum up, yeah, check out the Spark and the Spark Pro. We're talking about $40 and $80 value, original MSRP, whatever you want to call it, with lots of options, lots of opportunities to cut down that price a lot. So, got some people coming up the dock, so I'm gonna make this really quick. Check them out, check out the rest of our videos. The guys will be back on a video really soon here, I'm sure. Keep following along. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know if you think that this thing is worth the money. If you think that um, I'm ridiculous or whatever, then cool, let me know that too. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you guys very soon. Keep looking out for videos, watching for content. Things are gonna get crazy. I think that's it. Spring is upon us. It's still cold. It's still cold right now, but spring is upon us. So we'll see you guys soon. Catch you next time. Later. If you ever see me, don't, don't you know, feel free to, to stop up. I don't, stop, stop up. Larry's a little bit more uh, antisocial than I am, but Larry won't bite either. He's uh, he's definitely cool. He's just he likes to be left alone while he's fishing, and I can understand that. Mm -hmm.